what is your approach to dealing with someone who might have a, a sexual sin or an immorality of, of, of sorts like that? And what would be your approach uh, in dealing with a person like that? Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another video on this channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please watch to the very end. Thank you so much also for subscribing. Before I play you that video of how Pastor Robert Morris uh, responded to that question, please watch this latest update from Gateway Church and Gateway conferences. Welcome to Gateway Conference. I hope you are as excited as I am. Are you excited? Ready for God to move? Well, God is going to move. That's the main thing. It's not just that we get information, but we get revelation and transformation and that we meet with God. And here's the great thing. God has been looking forward to this conference more than you have because he's been looking forward to getting you away from all the noise and getting to talk to you for a little while. So it's going to be a good, good conference. Uh now, first I want to disappoint you because that introductory uh, video you've just watched, you might never get to see it or hear it from that same person. Also, this year, if you had planned to attend Gateway Conference this year, 2024, then I'm here to disappoint you with this news because Gateway Conference 2024 has been cancelled. In a statement that was released on the official social media page for Gateway Conference, uh, they indicated that... Um, they have cancelled it and they gave and they gave the following reasons. So I want you to check out this statement that was released. We want to let you know that after much prayer and consideration, we have decided not to hold Gateway Conference in 2024. Our congregation and staff are in the midst of navigating Robert Morris' resignation and the emotions surrounding it. We are deeply sorry for the pain this situation caused the survivor, other survivors of abuse, and the church at large. As we seek to navigate this season in a healthy way and in a manner that promotes healing for everyone affected, we believe it best to not hold Gateway Conference this year. We are sincerely sorry for any inconvenience or disappointment this causes. For those who have already registered, we will be issuing full refunds on the tickets. We are overwhelmed by the love and support we've received from many of you for our congregation, volunteers, and staff who serve this church. Thank you for your partnership and support through this season, and thank you for your love and prayers. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. So, according to Gateway Church, they are not going to hold uh, this year's Gateway Conference. And so, most definitely, it's because, first of all, the main convener, who was uh, Pastor Robert Morris, has already resigned. Uh, his would-be successor also resigned from Gateway Church. Right now, they are in the process of uh, looking for a replacement for them. They Therefore, the church is in disarray and therefore they need to take some time, which I think is why they need to cancel, even though they say that they still have uh, uh, a lot of emotions navigating through this period. So it's understandable. So I think, uh, and also they have promised that whoever had purchased tickets uh, for the conference, they will get a full refund. Now, uh, I thought uh, of sharing a video I bumped onto uh, from previous sermons that uh, from the previous uh, conferences that have happened. So there was this time in one of the conferences where Pastor Robert Morris was asked how to deal with morophilia in the church. And remember, when C.D. Klimshia exposed Pastor Robert Morris, the first statement that was released by the church elders, including Pastor, uh, that is, I think it was on behalf of Pastor Morris, was that he had uh, resigned because of moral 
failure. So I want you to listen to how Pastor Morris responded to this question. Watch this video. Well, um, we have had to deal with that, obviously, here at Gateway. And what we've done is we've become more proactive. Um, I'm, I tell the staff, uh, you know, things I'm dealing with. I'm very transparent, you know. Uh, obviously, there are things that you shouldn't talk about except with trusted friends. But I'm transparent. I'm meeting with um, Dr. Henry Cloud right now, uh, helping me. And I've told the whole staff, I said, you know, uh, just, I mean, y'all already know, but, uh, you know, I'm crazy. And so I need help. And, um, but you, you do math equations in your head. We already know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, but what I try to let the congregation, the staff know is you're crazy too. I mean, you just don't know it, but you're crazy too. In some area, you're crazy and, and you need help too. And so I want you to get help. I want you to ask for help. So we have on staff people you can go talk to that would not be your overseer about a problem you're having. And we tell them, if, if you'll bring it to light in, during the battle and struggle, we'll help you. But if, if it's brought to light or you bring it to light when, you, when you've already done something that disqualifies you, we're still going to help you, but you won't be able to stay because you're disqualified. Then you couldn't stay in ministry. And it's better for you not to be in ministry at that point. You do need to work on your family or your marriage. But we're, we're constantly saying, tell us before. Tell us I mean, you say, yeah, well, what do you mean before? I mean, if you're looking at pornography on the internet, tell us. And we have, the, we have a thing where, you know, every computer is, pro, is checked and we have keystrokes. And, you know, if you, if you go somewhere, we're going we're gonna to find out probably so we can help you. Because I'd much rather come to you and say, hey, you're looking at pornography. Let's talk about it. Let's get you in some counseling. Then your wife come and say, my husband committed adultery. You know, I'd much rather catch it soon. So we do everything we can to, to have an open environment that you can talk about it and not be penalized, but you can be helped. One of the things in our eldership a while back that we talked about, we, about half our elders are on staff, about half are not on staff. And one of the non-staff elders said, he said, I just realized something for the first time listening to you guys talk. He said, if you have a moral failure, it's your job. It's your job. He said, if a guy in the business world has a moral failure, it's not his job. Nobody takes his company from him. Nobody fires him, you know. He said, hey, they, that's, just, that's a personal problem. I hope you get help, you know. So he said, I understand now the fear that you guys have of bringing it out when you're dealing with something. And so he said, let's try to create an atmosphere where we, we can eliminate the fear and, and so our pastors can come forward and say, I'm having a problem in this area. Now I understand why Gateway Elders and Gateway Church have deleted all Pastor Robert Morris sermons from their YouTube channel. They have deleted all his sermons from his uh, from the church's website. Uh, his own website was also shut down, and all videos uh, were made private. Um, I think the only sermons available on 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 online are from. Uh, the churches, other, other churches other than Gateway where he had been invited to preach. Because in a certain section of the, his answer, he says that uh, he has created a way where pastors who are struggling should come out and tell the truth. And also he said that if in case the truth comes out after the fact, maybe they have done something wrong, then they are automatically disqualified from ministry and for him the reason he had to resign the reason he has received all that backlash after he was exposed by cindy it's because he hid the truth he never gave the true facts of who the young lady he used to talk about who she was how old she was and when the truth came out that she was actually 12 years old, that's where everything went haywire. I wish he had told the truth. Maybe he could have, uh, the, the punishment then could have been lighter. Maybe uh, justice would have been served and maybe he could have uh, 
come back to ministry in a better way but now i don't know so ladies and gentlemen please i don't know what you think about this answer that he gave and uh it seems it's such a disgraceful way to retire from ministry but uh at the same time i believe god had his own reasons of why he chose to use him to plant gateway church and even to serve that church all through those years until now god has his own reasons and god from the scriptures we have seen he has used flawed people uh in the bible the bible is full of flawed people so we might not understand the same way that the bible says that our thoughts are not like his thoughts and his ways are not like our ways as far as the east is from the west so are our tara tara i don't remember how that finishes but only god knows why it had to happen that way because i know a all knowing god knew what had transpired but still he chose to use him so ladies and gentlemen let's continue praying for him even if he has resigned even if no one would want to see him come back to ministry let's continue praying for him his family his children uh gateway people uh and all people who have listened to him preach and probably they have been impacted by his ministry so thank you so much for watching this video please stay locked and we will keep you updating you on any uh, uh updates from uh, uh from gateway church and also from the christian circle so god bless you remember to subscribe like this video let's engage at the comment section god bless you